Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Bits of Business podcast. I'm your host, Monila Odinsi, and today I'm excited to be joined once again by youth leaders Anna Maria and Patience to interview our guest, Amita Krishnatha. An exceptional leader, Amita is a director of data analytics at Walmart Global Technology, and her analytical career stretches from GE Capital to PayPal. My co hosts and I are excited to learn more about how Amita has navigated her career and the overall field, how her childhood has shaped where she is today, and where she believes the future of STEM lies for youth around our world. So, without further ado, let's head into the interview. Hi. Let's just get straight into it. Um, Patience has an icebreaker for us to start with. What is a question in any respect you think everyone should be asking right now and why? Um, first of all, um, I'm thrilled that um, you guys, young minds like you, are working together across geographies um, to bring this together. And you guys are opening up yourselves to learn a lot more. And I hope this is going to be an encouragement for, um, you know, your peers and uh, the younger ones that are looking up to you guys as mentors and role models. Now to answer your question, yes, you rightly said inquisitiveness is, is key not for just my role um, at Walmart as um, the director of analytics um, in everything we do. Um, in addition, I would add a couple of things. Um, there are two other things that, you know, is, is important. One is the ability to take risk and the other one is the growth mindset. You know, if you think about it, the, role, the world around us is changing so fast. Technology is changing. How we do things is changing so fast. So we need to keep up with our skills and knowledge. If not, it becomes absolute, right? Um, to do that, what do we need to do? Learn, take risks, try different things. And if we fail, we fail, right? And that's where the growth mindset comes in. Okay, take a risk, do it. If you if things don't pan out the way you thought it would, go try something else. So to me, those th three things are key. Being inquisitive, you know, being able to take risk and having a growth mindset and having positivity around whatever situation you are in or whatever problem is being thrown at you. Okay, that was such a great answer. Now I would appreciate if you could give the listeners a quick summary of who you are and what you do before we get deeper into the interview and discover more about what makes you, you. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I'm a professional wife, a mother of two wonderful, high energetic girls. Um, I'm a, a self-declared uh, foodie and I love wine. So that's me now. Um, I was born um, in South India. Um, you know, I'm the oldest of four siblings and uh, growing up in the 70s and 80s in a conservative family, um, you know, being the oldest in the family, I had the responsibility for my siblings and my younger cousins, right? Um, and so my dad was a dairy and poultry farmer and being conservative, you know, we were all educated. We were all, um, you know, um, taught to be respectful. And uh, one thing that was ex not expected of me was to be a career woman, right? My dad um, said, hey, you know what? You get educated, you get married off well. And if something happens, your education will come in handy. But as, as I went to college, as I learned, I'm like, no, that's not what I want, right? I will choose when to marry, who to marry, if I want to have kids, and I'll choose what I want to do, right? Just having the education and opening, you know, thinking about what you really want to do was, um, it was everything, right? And that kind of opened up doors. Eventually, I started working, moved to um, the United States, and like they say, rest is history. I thank you so much for that early description. I think that's really powerful what you said. You wanted to make your own path in your own way, despite societal constructs. And so I think that already shows how much of an amazing and powerful leader um, that you are. So now that we know a bit more about you, I'd like to begin sort of this interview timeline that I like to put all of my guests on, or all of our guests on, where we start with your earliest memories that you've kind of highlighted a bit and then move on to sort of your college experience and that your eventual work career just to see how um everything has shaped where you are now because i think we're all shaped 
by our past experiences. Um, so currently you work in the analytical and technological fields, but I'm curious as to how you became interested in those subjects. Would you have described yourself as sort of an innovative or analytical mind from young, or is this more of a sporadic interest that developed later in your life? So I would say it's a little bit of a happy coincidence for me. Um, when I started thinking about what to do um, for my uh, college degree, there were a few options. I, I went and back, back and forth between a few options. And then finally, I ended up um, doing uh, my undergrad in agricultural marketing then I had a couple of choices for my postgraduate, and then I picked agricultural economics. And in that, um, you know, you, you can't think about it, right? A agriculture and like being in technology, being doing analytics, but there is a very deep connection. Um, so in agricultural economics, there is a lot of statistics, econometrics. These are like the foundation for, you know, basic stuff that you learn that you can apply in any field. So I did get lucky, um, at, you know, in, in my choice. At that point, I didn't think much when I made those choices. I did it because it was interesting. And at that point, it seemed like it was the best choice. Um, now, thinking back, I feel like I made, um, made the right choice. And that's why I said it's a little bit of a happy coincidence. And then right out of college, I got a job um, in the same field. So then, you know, um, I started building on what I had studied in college, right? And um, you know, then I realized, hey, um, yeah. So I became a statistical model uh, modeler as soon as I got out of college. In the beginning, it was hard, right? Um, I'm not going to. Um, you know, sugarcoat it. It was really hard trying to understand, you know, not just the data, the business world. Later on, uh, what I realized is um, data is a means to solve the problem. Analysis is a means. What what you really need to understand is the business, what business problem you're trying to solve, right? Understand everything that's built in that business or around the business, right? Understand the customers, understand your internal process, your systems, and most importantly, people. Once you understand that, right, that then it becomes easier to go look um, for the right data, it becomes easier to see, hey, this is what the data is telling me or is not telling me, right? Then you you have a larger perspective and then then people, you can go have those conversations with, with different stakeholders or your partners and say, okay, now I understand the system or I understand the process or I understand your business problem. Now let's go solve it. That's really amazing. I really learned a lot just in a few moments. And yeah, moving on to talk about your college experience. Um, I've heard that college and the experiences gained there can provide firsts for many people. So um, what were your ambitions and aspirations when you first started college? And why would you say you attended university? And what effect would you say it had on your current role? Sure. So when I was little, I, I wanted to be a microbiologist. And then I grew up and then I thought, hey, I want to go, um, you know, uh, be a lawyer. So I went to college for six months to be a lawyer. And then I changed again. And then I went to the University of Agricultural Sciences and I graduated in marketing, agricultural marketing. And then I did my postgraduate and then started doing PhD in agricultural um, economics. Um, so, you know, I really didn't know what I wanted to be, quite frankly, um, when I was younger, right? And um, what I would say is along the way, I wanted to do something else, right? I decided I wanted to do organic farming and I wanted to, you know, open a cooperative to preserve the indigenous, um, you know, uh, crops that were in, in the South of India. And then once I graduated, I decided, hey, I like the field of data. I want to stick to this. And quite honestly, even if I had chosen to become a microbiologist or become an organic farmer, I think that would have been just as fun. Um, but attending the university, exposing myself to data, and this is a field uh, which kind of level sets a lot of stuff. 
right? You need the skills. You need don't need to be physically strong, right? You and the skills are um, is not rocket science. You can pick up those skills and just having that, um, you know, and and getting into a field even though it's male dominated, but you know, it is a field where um, everyone is equal. It's sort of um, you know, what information you can bring to the table. So that's that's how um, I've tried to navigate and learn. Um, there's a lot of things that you don't learn in college, you learn along the way, but having that exposure to information and learning those skills will go a long way. Clearly agreed. Um, even the career confusion, it's still yeah. so prevalent. Like everyone I know, like all of us are really confused about careers whether we want to do that or this. So even I myself have taken the approach to like try everything out and see what uh, fits the best for me. Um, so my question is, I've always heard that the transition coming out of can either make you or break you. So coming out of university and entering a largely male dominated field, was there ever a time that you felt discouraged? If so, how did you overcome this and eventually venture on the path of finding a niche in the corporate world? Yeah, um, it's funny. I have to tell you guys this story. When I was doing my PhD, I got offered a job um, as a statistical modeler. And, and at that point, um, you know, when I when I told my professors and um, my college friends, it, it just they they lost the word statistical and they just kept the word modeler. And uh, I believe someone said she is so short. How can she be a modeler? Right. So that's the implicit bias people have. Um, at that time, when I came out of college, um, you know, I would say I was somewhat oblivious and ignorant to what was going and I wasn't aware. And then as I, you know, traversed through my career, I realized there is it is very male dominant and there's a lot of bias and inequality right and and i've struggled with it my early career i i really struggled with my place right what do i bring to the table what is it what is my um, you know what we call usp unique value proposition Right? And I've realized what I need to do for myself and for others is to just speak up right? Even, or ask questions. Right? If you don't ask questions, if you don't make your voice heard, um, you failed. Right, you may be the most brilliant mind, but if people don't see your a point of view or if they don't hear from you, they will form their own opinions about you, and you don't want that. So that's the biggest trouble we as women have, and um, you know, just voicing our opinion, standing up for ourselves, right? And then once you do that a few times, then it becomes natural, and then people will start emulating what you are doing. Right. And when they see two women standing up, the next two and three women that are in, in the meeting or not in the meeting have heard you speak will say, oh, yeah, you know what, when they can do it, I can do it. If you see more people like you, um, something you'll do it. I definitely agree. And I think I really love what you said about like speaking up for yourself and advocating for yourself, especially as a woman in a male largely male dominated field is so, so important. And once you do that, you can also inspire other people to do the same thing. Yeah. And it's sort of like that domino effect and that can be really, really powerful. So thank you for highlighting that. And so kind of touching on more about the meat of what you do at Walmart, global technology um, and data analytics and just the overall business field. Could you detail what an average day in your workday looks like? Um, sort of what do you do on the daily basis and how do you think it contributes to the overall mission of Walmart Global Tech as a whole? Yeah, sure. My when I think about my day, you know, where do I give most of my mind share to? So there are many things going on, right? You have tactical problems to solve that day, and then you have your team 
and you need to give guidance to your team, but you also need to think about what's the next big thing I need to do in order to, um, you know, get the mission of the company and, um, you know, quite frankly, our goals as a team forward, right? These are three different things that I need to balance. And how I think about it is mornings, I, I'm most productive in the mornings. That's where I start thinking about the larger problems to solve. And then, um, you know, then you start thinking about, oh, you know what, immediately I have these other meetings to attend. What do I do there? And then how do I, and then I spent a lot chunk of my time during the day um, talking to my team, making sure they get what they need to be more productive and they get, and, and my, my job is to remove the roadblocks for them and give them guidance. So that's where I spend a lot of my time right now. But what I'd like to do is spend a little more time thinking about the larger picture and solving the bigger problem. When I think about um, Walmart, right? Walmart's mission is to save time, save money, so uh, you can live better, right? And, and to me, that's very powerful. So we fall behind the mission of the company. If I have more time I can spend more time with my family and do things that I like to do okay? so I am in tune with that mission of the company and what and and what can we do to advance that mission right sometimes most of my day is spent in just trying to solve the very tactical problems but that those tactical problems that I solved today will also help me in the longer term speaking a bit more about your personal role in your job um, what would you say your personal mission at work is every day and what do you hope to achieve when you walk into work daily and how do you measure success? I would think about that question a little differently. What is my personal mission? Um, is not just at work, right? Um, work is a large part of it. You know, I have family, I have um, my husband and kids, I need to think about work-life integration. And with COVID, everything is disrupted, right? So you don't have that clean cut between work and um, the rest of your life. So it kind of all um, intermingles. Um, given that we are a large um, geographically distributed team, we have calls starting at six or seven in the morning, and then I have my calls going up to 10 o'clock. My personal mission every day is to make sure I, I don't go nuts, I don't go crazy, right? When, when I think about my goals, I think about it in steps, right? Um, larger um, goals, and then I break it down to maybe quarters, and then I break it down to weeks and even days and hours. I'll, I'll give you a simple example in my personal life. I had an injury, and then I had a surgery. Right, um, and then I had knee surgery, and I can couldn't go up and down the stairs. I had to take the elevator, and then for that quarter, my goal was to go up the stairs without holding on to the railing. Right, that became my quarterly goal, and then I broke it down into every day. Okay, one today I'm going to go up the stairs with my crutches, uh, but it's, uh, and I will hold on to the rail. So then you start building on it slowly, and that those little things become your everyday. Cool. That's honestly a really, really interesting approach. Usually when you ask someone about success, it's more inclined towards work and it's not really inclined towards a balance or anything about the work life, anything like that. So it was yeah. really interesting to get that answer. Uh, looking to the future of the business fields, from what you've seen, do you believe that we as a society are doing enough to decrease the gender disparity in these fields? If so, why? If not, what more do you think needs to be done? I 100% believe we can get the playing field level. But then is the question. And by how much can we move this needle, right? The pendulum is now swung towards, you know, male dominance, right? We really need to swing the pendulum the other way. It's not just women, right? It's LGBT and others that are, you know, definitely not as privileged as uh, being a white male. How can we get that playing field level? 
right? The first thing is to is the awareness. So for most people, if they are not aware, uh, it's it's just that they are not tuned to thinking about it from that perspective. Right? Um, I, we do have women execs in the company. When they notice that not as many women are getting promoted, we just need one woman to ask the question. Right? Then they'll start triggering a lot of thoughts. And then um, allyship. Um, one thing that I will I cannot emphasize enough is allyship, right? So think about men as the inner circle. We are the outside circle, right? You need a, a need a hand to help pull you up and out of where you are, and for them to advocate. And then, um, what I think about as I think about allyship is gender equity. People talk about gender equality to me. Let's start with gender equity. Gender equity is first realizing that we are not all on the same level playing field. What can we do to get that equity, right? Maybe that equity would come in terms of, you know, choosing a female to do the role instead of a male or choose picking up someone that you know has the potential and giving those nudges, right? Whatever that is, or talking to women like you, right? Give you, giving you guys the exposure or helping you, right? It, uh, you know, with technology, it doesn't have to be in our small community. It can be in the whole wide world, right? Or, you know, simple things like uh, lending to women, right, at low interest rate. You know, those are the things we should do to get to gender equity and then talk about gender equality. I don't think there is a silver bullet for it. It's each one of us standing for ourselves, right? Our partners, our fathers, and, you know, our sons, you know, all of us coming together. Um, here's one thing I, um, I want to tell you. So one of my coworker has twins. She has a boy and a girl and dear Indians, and she was telling me, hey, you know what, if I need to teach my child about equality, then they need to know how to make bread. So I'm teaching my son how to make bread. He needs to know how to roll it out and fry it, right? Just as my daughter knows how to build like a rocket ship, a Lego rocket ship. So, you know, I think a lot of it is in our control and our power, right? And that's how we start changing the next generation, our generation. I think we are a lot better than where our um, mothers were or our grandmothers were, right? We just have to make it better for our children and their children. So they stand on our shoulders, like just like we are standing on our mother's shoulders. Uh, and our ancestors' shoulders. I definitely agree. And I think that, thank you for providing such a multifaceted answer because it's not a simple question. And I love how you highlighted um, the awareness that's necessary and like educating yourself and others because I think a lot of people don't have that awareness of some of these issues and so even just that simple step of like you said making that difference like your friend educated her son mm -hmm. about baking and then also her daughter about building a rocket ship and it may seem simple but those simple steps can lead to a larger sort of answer to this very complicated issue and so yes thank you so much for highlighting highlighting all of those things as we wrap off this interview i think it's critical to highlight your organization's accomplishments as well as your definition of success and i think as we even look into more of your personal um, life and thinking about your life so far, do you have any, what I like to call yes moments where your efforts have been rewarded and you really just love what you're doing and it sort of has shown you that what you're doing has had an impact and that has sort of brought a smile to your face. Do you have any moments like that? Yes, yes. Um, you know, as you were asking the question, I was smiling. Yes, there are a lot of yes moments. And those yes moments have come from the fact, um, not just me getting recognized, it's really from other women that recognize the fact that I'm pushing and they can push too. Um, so professionally, you know, um, you know, when when people recognize the effort, call it out. Um you know, that's, that's incredibly powerful. That's more powerful than getting promoted or getting more money in your job, right? Just the fact that they are recognizing your effort. And, um, and also, uh, when my, um, 
you know, leadership reaches out to me and says, hey, I, I recognize that, um, you know, you have potential, I'd like to work with you, right? Just that thought of them um, thinking about you and what you can bring to the table and reaching out is, is like, yes, you know, people are invested in me, people want me to succeed. And then the other um, other place in my professional life uh, where I, I found it very satisfying is, um, you know, uh, people tell me, hey, I, I heard you do this, right? I heard you're taking, uh, you saying this, and I, and I think I can do this too. Or a coworker texting me on the side and saying, hey, why don't you say this? Why don't you do this? Why don't you sign up to do this? Right? These are those small moments that keep me um, you know, going and tell me that I can do better than what I have done. This lady recently told me, hey, you know what? I've, I've seen you do this and I want to do it too. I'm like, yes, right? Um, she's just starting a career when she said this. I'm like, yes, I love to hear that. Or, you know, giving them an opportunity, right? I've had women that have taken a break and come back to work and I'm like, yes, let's bring them on. Let's train them. And um and then this one woman told me, hey, when you hired me in your team, I thought I won a ticket to Titanic. I'm like, you know, that was so heartwarming, you know, even if she's not in my team anymore, um, you know, it's just the fact that I gave her that opportunity um, to do better than what she was doing is incredibly powerful. And so those are the moments in my career and in my life that I keep with me. I think that was such a great answer. And yes, the little acknowledgement can really change everything, whether it's a student or an employer, like it really makes a huge impact. And uh, as a final question, what would be your advice to the aspiring youth change makers and as a fellow Indian, specifically Indian youth, who long to make impact in the field of technology, analysis, innovation, or anything similar? Yeah, I think, you know, women are incredible, right? They are graduating. And, um, you know, if, if you just look at um, the scores, women are doing much better than men, right? Um, everywhere, like if women, girls, and boys had equal opportunity, right? Like, like for example, in the US, right? Um, if they have the equal opportunity, then we do better. Like in other countries, maybe in India and in Africa and other countries, women are not even, girls are not even given that chance, right? So, you know, the thing that we need to do is give them that chance, right? Educate them. That to me is like the most important things. You, you know, your young minds, right? You have, um, you can reach out to people and, you know, help the others that are not educated to be more educated, right? And you also have the opportunity to, um, you know, influence the younger generation of women that are coming up. They're going to be looking at you um, just like, you know, you're looking at somebody else, um, you know, to, to give you that guidance and that knowledge and, um, you know, help you guys. So I think that's where um, you guys can make an you know, incredible impact. Oh, women are good at this. Girls are good at this, right? Yes, we can run as fast, but we can also be, the endurance is there, right? The endurance and the learning is there, right? We just need to provide an opportunity and we need to start thinking a little different goals. You know, everything is going to be around technology, right? Just having that exposure and learn, the STEM, get into uh, STEM. And that's where I think we can make a major impact and also recognize that there is bias, there is inequality. Right? And there will be, you know, even 100 years from today, there will be, how do we, right? How do we equip ourselves to address um, or stand up to ourselves? So that really is something I, um, I truly believe in. And, you know, you 
you ladies are amazing. You're already doing such wonderful job. I think we all definitely agree. And like you said, education, um, raising awareness, advocacy, and just we can even start doing those little things, whether it's like you said, pushing more people into STEM or reaching out to people who may not have as many even resources as we do. Um, even though it's just a little things, I think that was a common theme throughout the interview that we can do so much, um, even in ourselves. And those little things do add up in the end. So thank you so much for joining us for this interview today. Absolutely. We really appreciate it. And I really enjoyed our, our talk. Honestly, we were able to learn on a lot. And I'm really grateful that we all got an opportunity for this. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you for meeting all of you and good luck. Thank you. Bye. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Bits of Business podcast. Patience and Maria and I loved hearing more about the journey and story of Amita Krishnapa, and we hope you did as well. Make sure to tune in soon to hear the story of another inspiring entrepreneur, leader, and innovator. Thank you. Bye. Bye.